Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and we are done Thanksgiving. We got back a couple days ago. I showed you guys kind of what we were able to pick up on Black Friday and today I'm getting back into my cooking. Kind of getting back to regular food <laughs> and not gorging on just big huge plates of food. Um, today I am going to show you guys one of a, a really quick, well it's not so quick because I have a small air fryer, but it's one of my favorite meals and it is air fryer fish sticks. And I thought with the air fryer fish sticks I would make up a batch of um, what is it? Macaroni and cheese. I've never made this recipe before. This recipe is out of this book. Um, it is the homemade pantry, 101 foods that you can stop buying and start making. This book is really, it is a very, very good book. It is one of my favorites. I haven't really made a lot out of it um, in a while. Um, but there is a macaroni and cheese recipe on page 200. Now this book does say that it serves six to eight people and there's just me and Stephen and I mean as much as we love macaroni and cheese, we're not going to eat that much. So I am going to end up actually splitting this recipe in half, um, but I can... I will um, link this book in the description if you guys are interested in it. Um, this book, if you see on the cover, is where I actually got the recipe to make my own kind of Pop-Tarts. They are so good. It's just pretty much pie pastry, cut it into a square, put some jam in the center, and put another pie pastry on top and bake it. And it's so good. So for the air fryer chicken nugget, or the air fryer fish sticks, um, I am just using some Costco cod cuts, and I will show you how I'm going to dice them up, but you do need to have them defrosted, and they are still a little bit frozen in the middle. Um, so I am going to, I guess, start with the macaroni and cheese. Another thing that I want to make, because... Um, we went out of town, as you've seen on that last video. We went out of town for Thanksgiving, so I didn't unfortunately bring home any leftovers. I don't have any leftover pies or any like snacking things in the house. Um, and I haven't gone to the grocery store because I don't really need to. So I want to kind of have like a little sweet treat. Tonight, today I am going to make a Starbucks lemon raspberry loaf. It's supposed to be like a mock Starbucks one. It's not the actual Starbucks recipe. This is just a mock recipe that I found online um, and it's supposed to taste like it. So I thought that would be a nice little um, snack to have for dessert after we have our fish sticks and macaroni and cheese. So let's get started on making this Starbucks um, loaf. That because the noodles have to cook and stuff. So we'll get started with this loaf and then while this loaf is cooking because it only takes 35 minutes to cook, we will um, get the macaroni started. Gotta heat this oven to 375. Like that, preheated. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mix together Flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and lemon rind in a large bowl. You guys cannot see me. <laughs> We're gonna add one and a half cups of flour. I also wanna get my uh, loaf pan ready. I'm just gonna lightly butter it and then flour it. Then we need three fourths of white sugar, three teaspoons of baking powder, we need to add three fourths teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of lemon rind. I'm just gonna wash my. I have this really neat um, zester. I got it like maybe 20 years ago. It's this really cool just microplane zester. Um, so we're just gonna add two teaspoons. I'm just gonna grate the whole lemon because I love, love, love the lemon taste. I might even need more than one lemon, but that's all I got, so that's what it's getting. I can see if I can find one and I can link it below for you guys in the description. 
I absolutely love it. Okay, so we're just going to give that a quick little stir. Then we are going to add three-fourths cup of milk. I am using just a whole milk. And then I have one egg here, and it says just to slightly beat the egg. Okay, so we'll just add that in. We need to add one-third cup of butter, melted butter. It smells so good. Now it says once that you have this stirred, it says to add two to three drops of lemon juice and mix. I don't know what two to three drops are, but I know that I like a heavily, heavily flavored um, cake, like loaf. So I am probably gonna add, I would say maybe one to two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then I know that it has raw egg in it but I am going to test it and see if it has enough lemon taste to it because I don't want to bake it and have it with like completely no lemon juice in it. And I realize that I have a lemon here and I could easily just juice that, but I did not. Lemon juice everywhere because I did not put my lid on it correctly. So it, I'm glad I tasted it because it didn't have enough lemon juice. But now that I just spilled lemon juice all over my kitchen, um, it does have some more lemon juice in it. So that will be good. We'll just stir that in and we'll clean up our mess now because lemon juice is very sticky and I don't want that all over my lemon juice is cleaned up. I am so very thankful that I keep all most of my recipes in these plastic um, sleeve covers. What I do for my menu, and if you guys want to know a little bit more about how I do my menu planning, leave a comment below and then if you guys actually want to see it, then I can make a video next month when I do my menu because today I actually did my menu already. I do a monthly menu. And so what I do is I have a binder here, which is my, my menu binder. And I take all my recipes that I put on my monthly menu and I pull them from my cookbooks and I put them in these plastic sleeves. And then I add them all to this binder so that every month I know where all my recipes are that I need for that month and they are in a plastic sleeve cover. So instances like that where I sprayed the kitchen with lemon juice, this recipe did not get damaged because it was in this plastic thing. So that's why I keep all of my recipes in here. If you guys, like I said, if you wanna see, um, if you want me to do a video on how I do my menu planning and kind of where I get my recipes from, like what ideas I, kind of getting to do the menu, let me know. And then I can definitely put a video up next month for you guys. <laughs> so my recipe, I don't know why, but I only wrote down half of how the directions on how to do it. Um, it like totally skips over the part to make the raspberry sauce. So it says that you need one cup of frozen raspberries, quarter cup plus one tablespoon of water, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of cornstarch. I'm assuming because it's a frozen raspberry and because we're adding water, I'm assuming that we need to like make a sauce with it on the saucepan or on the stove. So I'm just gonna put it on like a low heat until everything is kind of melted and I'm gonna call it good. So we have that batter that we just made is just sitting over there in the bowl waiting for us to make this sauce. So I have one cup of frozen raspberries in here. I'm gonna add quarter cup water plus one tablespoon. I'm gonna add one and a half tablespoons of sugar. And then I'm gonna add one teaspoon of arrowroot calls for cornstarch, but I always use arrowroot instead of cornstarch. These are just the raspberry pieces that I got from Azir. I think I got it in my last order. Maybe a couple orders ago. So they work perfect because they're already little pieces. 
I'm assuming we just want to like stir this till it's like a thick sauce because that's why we have the cornstarch in it. So I'm just going to bring it to a boil. So this is what consistency we're at. It is a little bit more runny than I would like. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this aside and we're going to let this cool. Turn the burner off and I put it to the back burner. So we're going to let it cool. And then once it's cooled, then what we're going to do is in our loaf pan, loaf pan, we are going to put half of that batter that we just made. You guys can't see me. I'm going to put half of the batter in this loaf pan. Then we are going to put the raspberry sauce on top of that. Then we're going to take a knife and just kind of like knife it in. And then we are going to add the other half of the batter on top. So we'll wait until that cools and we can do those steps. Um, I guess what we can do is we can get started on the macaroni while we're waiting for that to cool. So I have some water boiling on the stove now and I weighed out half a pound of these macaroni noodles. These are just some I got from Azure Standard. Um, I, and you can see by my jar, I actually need to order more. Um, I do have a pasta maker and it does make macaroni, but it makes like the really big macaroni pieces. And I like these for when I do the macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to put these on my order, just reminding myself. So because we are halving this recipe, it says to grease a 9 by 13 pan with butter, but we are halving it. So I am going to grease this 2 quart 11 by 7. Um, and then that's why I'm only using half a pound of macaroni because it does call for one pound. We are going to get two cups of milk coming to a boil. It does call for four cups of milk, but because we are halving it, we're only going to use two cups. So we are going to get that to a boil. And we got our pan all buttered up. Our water is boiling now. So all I'm going to do is just add some salt to this water. I like to heavily salt the water. And I'm going to add noodles. It says to cook them al dente, so we're just going to give it a quick stir and just kind of keep a close eye on them. So it pays to read the full directions <laughs> before you start cooking. So I realized that I could just heat my milk up in the microwave because I wasn't putting anything into that saucepan so I actually just took that milk out of that saucepan and threw it into the microwave until it was like really really hot so what we're going to do now to this pot is we are going to add we're going to fix that we got boiling over we're going to add two tablespoons of butter to that pot and we're going to turn this one down lovely smell. So we're going to melt this butter over medium heat. Now that it's melted, we're going to add three, we're going to whisk in three tablespoons of flour. This is just like an all-purpose flour. So we're going to slowly whisk in this hot milk. Now to this, we're going to add half a teaspoon of smoked paprika and half a teaspoon of ground mustard. Again, guys, remember I'm halving this recipe, so these measurements I'm giving you are for half. So you're just going to double what I'm saying. And then it says to kind of keep whisking this for an additional five minutes. What you want it to do is you want the sauce to thicken up. The noodles are done cooking now. They are al dente. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour the noodles into this buttered baking dish. So now we have to pour that sauce that we made with the flour and the milk. We just have to pour it over top and incorporate it all into these noodles. Oh, also to add, I did add some salt and pepper 
um, to that sauce. Now the recipe does say that you can add broccoli if you if you would like to, but we're not going to add it. We're just going to do just a plain mac and cheese. So we have about half a pound here of ground parmesan and cheddar cheese. So we are going to add three fourths of this cheese on top. I just wanted to add, next time I make this, I am going to be stirring that cheese into the mixture because it wasn't as cheesy as we like it. It just kind of all sat on the top and hardened. So it calls for one pound of cheese, but again, we're halving it, so we only have half a pound here. Good, and now we are going to put on the breadcrumbs. It calls for two cups of breadcrumbs, so I'm gonna put on about one cup. salt on top, a little bit of pepper on top, and we're going to put a little bit of smoked paprika on top of it. This is going to go into the oven uncovered for 30 minutes. We need to get that out of the oven. Turn it off. Okay. So we are going to get the oven turned back on to 375. Ready to go. So if you remember in my video, if you, and I can link it. When I was making that Amish cinnamon bread, it overflowed. So I am going to now put this on a cookie sheet in case that happens. So I do not have to clean my oven. So we are gonna put this in the oven for 35 minutes. Then after 35 minutes, we'll check it and see if it's done. Let's get everything set up to do the fish sticks because they don't require the oven. 
So I'm making a little bit of an assembly line here. I have three pie plates, well, two pie plates and one um, cake pan. In the first pie plate, we are going to add salt, pepper, and flour. And we are going to add um, some garlic powder and a little tiny bit of smoked paprika. We're going to put about half a cup of flour. It's like three-fourths cup, actually. And then put about, I would say, a teaspoon of pepper, maybe half a teaspoon, and a teaspoon of salt. And then we'll go half a teaspoon of garlic powder half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Just stir this together. That is our first plate. Our second plate, we are going to crack two eggs. And we'll just lightly beat them. You know what, those were super small eggs, so I'm actually gonna add three eggs. And then in our last one, we are gonna add about one and a half cups of breadcrumbs. These are just some breadcrumbs that I made with um, some leftover sourdough bread. You can use pinko breadcrumbs also in that, that recipe. That works very well. I am keeping the breadcrumbs out because I always find that I need to top up the breadcrumbs because never, I never have enough. Okay, so to the breadcrumbs, we're going to add a little bit more garlic powder. Just a little bit. I would say maybe a quarter teaspoon. And add, again, just a little bit of smoked paprika. And then, again, quarter teaspoon of pepper and then maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt. We'll just mix that together. Remember, we don't really need to go crazy with the salt because we have those fish sticks um, or those fish pieces. They have salt on them, so we don't want to have too much salt. Well, it extracted a little tiny bit of water. Um, they were, like I said, they were pretty, I don't know if you can see that, but they were pretty, um, like, tough to begin with. Right, we need to get our air fryer preheating. So we are going to, we're going to turn it on to 400 and we're going to preheat it for seven minutes. While this air fryer is preheating, I am going to take these fish sticks or these fish pieces and I'm going to cut them into um, sticks essentially. Our air fryer is all preheated now. So we are going to take a piece of fish and we are going to make sure it's all coated in this flour mixture. Nice coated. Shake it off. Quickly. In the eggs. Shake off the extra eggs and then we're going to coat it in. It, and then we're going to put it in the air fryer. Ask it right here. I'm just going to lay it like this. You do not want them to overlap. You do not want them to touch. You need to have lots of space in order to get them nice and crispy. So I'll have to do about two batches. Then I just have a little spray bottle here that has some avocado oil in it. I'm just going to spritz the top of them lightly with some avocado oil. And we're going to put it back in the air fryer at 400 and we're going to cook these for 15 minutes and we're going to flip halfway through. Okay, we're at 7 minutes so we're just going to quickly give these a flip. Air fryer 
alarm just went off. Also, I just want to let you know, I checked that lemon loaf after 35 minutes when it dinged and it was completely raw inside. So I put it back in for another 20 minutes and then I just checked it now. It had, it was in for 15 minutes and there, it looks mostly done. There is a couple spots where it's not coming out clean, but the top is getting really brown. So I put some tin foil over top and I put it back in for another 10 minutes. So we'll check it after 10 minutes. That should be good. So that recipe, in fact, takes almost 40 to 45 minutes to cook. Actually, almost 50 minutes to cook. So let's get these um, fish sticks out of here and I'll show you what they look like. Here are the fish sticks. Again, because they are breaded with um, like a sourdough breadcrumb, they don't look like the ones that you buy in the box, but they taste super yummy. And then this is our mac and cheese. I'll show you once we scoop into it. Just waiting on that. It's got five more minutes for the um, lemon loaf. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to let you know about. The macaroni and cheese. You can actually make that and freeze it. Um, it says that you can freeze it whole and unbaked. You just wrap it in aluminum foil and then you thaw it in the refrigerator before baking it. Um, you bake it in the pan wrapped in the aluminum foil. Um, you can also put them in, into individual portions in the freezer. It says it um, lasts four months in the freezer. And then when you do the individual ones, it just says thaw and then warm in the microwave or on the stove top. So that is for the macaroni and cheese. Now for the fish sticks, you can also make these ahead of time and then freeze them. If you are freezing them, you freeze them raw and you do not cook them. So after you do that whole breading process, you would just put them on like a cookie sheet and flash freeze them and then do that individual vacuum seal thing that I do with my um, other stuff, like with my burgers. Um, then when you want to cook them, you just cook them from frozen at 400 in the air fryer. Remember, this is an air fryer recipe. So you cook them from frozen at 400 and you would cook them for 15 to 18 minutes and then again flipping them halfway through. So both of these meals that we made today you could make and freeze ahead. Um, I just have absolutely no freezer space so I, I can't really do the freezer meals so that's why I made the individual portions for today but I'm super excited. I also steamed up some broccoli for us to have with that. I had to whip up a quick quick batch of mayonnaise because I'm going to make tartar sauce. So all I do to make tartar sauce is I just take my mayonnaise and put a little bit of relish in it, my pickled relish, and there you go, tartar sauce. So I'm going to make some of that and then I will show you what that macaroni looks like. I'm super hungry. <laughs> we are going to check this bread and see if it's cooked. It smells really, really good. So that took 50 minutes to cook. Just if you make this recipe, you know that 50 minutes is approximately what it will take. So we have to completely chill this before we can put the icing on it. It does call for a nice thick, I don't know if you've, if you've gotten these at Starbucks, but they have that nice thick layer of icing on it, like an inch thick. Um, it does have a recipe for that, which is just powdered sugar, butter, milk, lemon extract, and lemon zest but we can't make it right now because this is really hot and you need to wait until it is completely cooled down before you ice it so I think what I'm gonna do is I am just going to um, not ice it I'm just gonna leave it plain like that because I don't want that extra sugar on it I just kind of want the natural flavor of lemon and raspberry so if you want to do the lemon icing it is one cup of powdered sugar two tablespoons of butter softened, two tablespoons of milk, half a teaspoon of lemon extract, and one fourth teaspoon of lemon zest. So once this is cooled, you just mix that all together and then you would put the icing on top. That is what it looks like. You can kind of see the raspberry in there. But yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't rise a lot, but we didn't fill it. I cannot wait to go and eat that macaroni and cheese. It smells so good in here with the macaroni and cheese and the lemon.
the molds. Definitely looking forward to this summer. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day or night whenever you're watching this, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys. There is my delicious holiday pudding. Probably will not eat all of that food. That is a lot of food. But that is what the pepperoni looks like. It is super, super cheesy. And remember, we used um, a whole wheat. Actually, it's a brown rice pasta, so the noodles do not look very white.